Welcome back to another video. Uh, today, let's do another death battle video. It's gonna be Guts versus Dimitri. Dimitri. Oh, with this one, I'm gonna have to go with Guts at least because I know him more than I know Dimitri. And anyway, Guts been through a hell, literal hell, back. So I, I'm going off his endurance. I think he has survived this, but. I don't know nothing about Dimitri. I might have to change my uh choice later on, but anyway, let's get into the video. Man Army! He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick! And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. In the realm of Midland, life really sucks all around. Demons run rampant, villages get pillages, and a helpless elf fairy has become target practice for That's exactly. He over here fighting demons. Literal demons. I don't know what Dimitri's fighting. Fire? Some thugs. Batter up! Until walking into the torment comes a stranger clad in black, cleaving through anyone in his way with one humongous sword. Wiz, that weapon is too big to be called a sword. Too massive and thick. More like a slab of raw iron that no normal man could wield. Except for the man with a simple but fitting name, Guts. Guts. But what is it that makes Guts so terrifying? Well, we're about to get into some really, really dark shit. Fair warning. Born from his mother's recently hanged corpse, Guts was taken in by a mercenary band. Let's See, this is why I got a... Uh read the manga I'm not so I know nothing about this shit I just know um about him I mean I know people get mad like I'll see anime watcher but I mean yeah I don't really have time to be reading uh manga one time I actually read manga was probably fairy tale I, I read all the fairy tale so that and eat eating zero Let's just say I like fairy tale stuff and related. But anyway, back on the top subject. I'm gonna read some more berserk. I'm gonna try, I'll try to read some berserk. Led by Gambino, who definitely isn't winning father of the year. Gambino put guts through the ringer, training him with swords way too big for him before putting him into live combat at only nine years old. Training with such large swords made guts inhumanly strong, but he needed a different kind of strength to endure the. Damn, guts is six eight. Shit. Damn, he is as tall as like LeBron. LeBron James right there. 24. Stop cat. Uh -huh. Casca. Yeah, he loved him some Casca. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, I think they said one time he fucks the demon. So I don't know about that. The horrendous abuse he suffered from Gambino. So he murdered the bastard in self defense. He deserved it, trust me. With no home or family to speak of, Guts aimlessly wandered for years as a lone mercenary. Until he caught the eye of the ambitious Griffith. Impressed by Guts's bold battle prowess and blunt honesty, Griffith wanted him. So Guts joined Actually. the mercenary group, the Band of the Hawk. Where Guts' gutsy fighting style made him the perfect captain. The dude was hardcore enough to fight 100 enemy soldiers on his own, and even helped end a 100 year long war, all while earning respect and glory with Griffith and his group. For the first time, Guts found true friends and comrades to rely on. But when Griffith realized he couldn't keep Guts at his side, uh, Really, really bad things happen. Upon the eclipse, Griffith summoned a bunch of demons, became a super demon himself, and sacrificed Guts' new friends to the abyss. And rates Casca. I remember that shit. <laughs> That wasn't bad enough. He marked Guts with a demonic brand, then raped his girlfriend Casca, forcing Guts to watch as his eye was split open and he was forced to tear off his own arm. Yeah, really bad things. Guts barely escaped with his life. He vowed to brutally murder Griffith and every demon down to the last one. No small task, even for him. And every big task needs even bigger weapons. Guts' is bread and butter, er, butter is the enormous dragon slayer. Six and a half feet long and weighing over 300 pounds. Dra 
Oh, he said six and a half feet. Oh, sorry, six and a half. Like some bird. Me too. Let me stop. 300 pounds. Dragon Slayer is absurd. In Guts's hands, it can cleave through plated armor and even demons with skin of Corundo, a real life metal that is harder than steel. And since Guts has made killing demons his favorite pastime, Dragon Slayer was exposed to so much demonic blood that it exists on the astral plane, meaning it can harm any supernatural monster. God, God, this thing's heavy. Guts also carries a collection of explosives and throwing knives, but I'm partial to his mechanical arm, complete with a wondrous invention of a repeater crossbow and a Get out of God, that's no. Mean, no, but they aren't as awesome as Dragon Slayer. Okay. Here. God, how does he do this? Okay, the repeater crossbow is pretty now you're on TV. Fire a volley of four to five bolts per second, making it the go-to option for mowing down groups of bad guys. And hey, if you gotta lose your hand, replacing it with a goddamn super gun is the way to go. Even demons are afraid of this thing. See ya, snake face! With his collection of weapons and indomitable will, Guts slaughtered everyone and everything in his way. Be it an army of trolls, a supersonic elf fairy, or some Bible thumper whose blows were like cannons. But while Guts took the physical challenges in stride, his mental strife was a different story. He had demons to deal with, literally and figuratively, always yeah. tormented by his inner beast of darkness. Guts tried to shoulder this trauma alone even for a time leaving behind Casca, who survived but was mentally broken. Nothing would replace the comrade's guts lost during the eclipse. However, through his resilience, he eventually saw the dangerous path he was on. Why they show that? Why they show Casca's ass? Don't make me act up. Don't make me act up. Behind Casca, who survived but was mentally broken. Nothing would replace the comrade's guts lost during the eclipse. However, through his resilience, he eventually saw the dangerous path he was on, and so reunited with Casca. Uh. It's been like two weeks for me. Sorry. And eventually came to depend on new companions. Including pretty boy Serpico. He doesn't look like much, but the guy is fast enough to dodge lightning at speeds over 100 times faster than sound. And Guts has kept up with him more than once. And thanks to the witch Flora, Guts got his deadliest and riskiest asset. The Berserker Armor. Oh boy, by shutting down all mental limitations, this armor gives Guts... Yeah, I finna say that armor. When I first saw it, I was like, ooh, this shit's sick. That's a nice looking arm, especially the wolf helmet. Nice touch. Oh shit, I lost my mouse. There it is. Jam in strength. Pain means nothing to him now, and it even heals injuries on the fly. Wait, did I say heal? What I meant was it pierces his torn flesh and broken bones together so he can fight until the actual last drop of blood has left his body. Man, that's hardcore. And extremely risky. Donning the armor has been nearly disastrous for him more than once. Yeah, when he's in a stitched up rage, the beast of darkness is gnawing on his mind, tempting him to go berserk. Bam! Title drop! Guts I was say. He is a sight to behold. He's held back a demonic dragon, withstood being impaled, and even teamed up with a fabled demon swordsman to take down an apostle that can channel lightning. And sliced up a cloud dude in the rawest manga panel ever! Just look at it! If that's not badass enough for you, he once killed a giant sea god! from the inside. With its wail, this behemoth created a storm that covered an entire island. The kinetic energy of such a storm is immense. Gauging the size of the island, the energy required to induce such a storm would need to exceed- Damn, was this in the anime? I don't remember. Damn, I'm gonna have to watch the anime again too. 600 kilotons of TNT. Yeah, that's right. Guts gutted a sea monster whose shout was a natural disaster. He needed to do that and much more to reach Elfhelm, where Costa no, I think I seen was it. finally returned. Things were looking up for the legendary black swordsman. But that bastard Griffith just wouldn't leave him alone. No matter how tragic his tale becomes, Guts will persevere for his allies both past and present. He has new friends, a renewed heart, a badass sword, and the last thing any man, demon, or god wants to do is mess with him. Fuck yeah! America. This episode of Death Battles brought to you by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life you can get stuck with tough choices and you're not sure how to move forward. Yeah, okay. On the continent of Fodlin lies the holy kingdom of Fargus, a knightly nation where the youth learn to swing a sword before they can write their own name. 
Prince Dmitry Alexandra Blathid was no exception. The kid was a prodigy, able to spar with far more experienced warriors. In Damn, 6-2. He getting blocked by Guts. Guts gonna block every shot he take. Likes combat training, blue lions. Eating weeds? Eating weeds? What the fuck? It's like formalities, fragile objects, and whatever that is. In part because he was a crest bearer. Or someone gifted mystical power through the blood of the goddess Sothis. Those born with a crest gain anything from enhanced magic to superhuman strength. At nine years old, Dimitri could lift giant boulders, run across mountains for hours, and constantly broke swords by accident. Most elites who had a crest also had a massive ego, but not Dimitri. Right, Dimitri was strong, but generally kind. Like when he gave his childhood friend Edelgard a dagger. An earnest, if odd, gift. Eh, I got shotgun shells for my first crush. But life took a turn for Dimitri when a mysterious group murdered his dad and a bunch of knights, burning them all in front of him and leaving the poor kid with some serious survivor's guilt. Guilt that only worsened when the country of Dusker was unjustly blamed for the tragedy. Dimitri lamented that he could not stop Fargus's corrupt nobles. Don't worry though, when those same nobles rebelled a couple years later, he fought them like a beast, slaying them all with sadistic glee. This savage side would emerge when Dimitri was reminded of the tragedy he witnessed. Otherwise, his chivalrous charm remained forefront. With guidance from his dead dad's buddy Rodrigue, Dimitri got into the Garrick Mock Officers Academy, where he led the Blue Lion's house and learned the mystic arts. Well, he's not the most proficient in it, but Dimitri did learn healing and elemental magics, able to call down lightning or even channel it through his weapons. Letting him electrocute tons of enemies at once, he learned this and more from everyone's favorite- Fuck, oh, I hope Guts can beat him. Shit, this- Ooh, this might be an interesting battle. Let's get into it. It's Smash Bros character, Professor Bylet. Assuming you picked Dimitri's Blue Lions when you played Fire Emblem Three Houses. We're getting a little meta here, but his story turns out very differently depending on the path chosen. Aside from the Blue Lions, there's Edelgard's Black Eagles. And the Golden Deer, led by the crafty Claude Von Regan, aka the Best House. <laughs> that band of goofy misfits? The Black Eagles are a far more cohesive unit. Nah, fear the deer, Wiz. You have no idea what you're talking about. Ashen Wolves for life, losers! Of course Jocelyn picks the goths! Anyway, in Dimitri's route, he mastered all manner of weaponry. Lances, swords, axes, gauntlets, and more. Some of these weapons use magic, some use poison, and others are used to slay giant monsters. But all of them made Dimitri an ace at warfare, especially when Byleth taught him some special skills. The seal movement technique stops foes in their tracks. Frozen lance skewers enemies with ice. I would not be able to play this game. Well, it depends. If if it's like a skill based, I mean, it's a turn based shit. I get bored of it. Like you talking, and then, then you just do uh, take turns fighting. It's like, like come on. I just press A on all the conversations. Like, come on, let's hurry up. I'm trying to get to the fighting. And Swordbreaker boosts evasion against blade users. To top it off, Dimitri can enter an awakened state for even more power. Dimitri led his classmates through thick and thin, but everything changed when he suspected the one behind the tragedy of Dusker was his old dagger friend, Edelgard. Dun dun dun! To end Fodlin's oppressive crest system, Edelgard and her empire declared war on Fargus and the Church of Seros. Dimitri could be cruel before, but after this betrayal, he snapped vowing to kill every last one of them. For five years, he slaughtered the enemy, all to appease the voices that called for Edelgard's head. He's not exaggerating. Dimitri truly believes his dead loved ones cry to him, unable to know peace until he claims vengeance. As if Prince-turned-murderer-hobo wasn't scary enough, he wields the ultimate lance, the hero's relic, Eridfar. Forged from the bones of dragon-like Nabataeans, Eridfar is much stronger than ordinary metal. It can pierce any armor with its signature move, Atrocity, and only crest bears can wield it without mutating into a monstrous black beast. With his lance... Fuck, I don't, I don't, I don't know, uh, I don't know Guts. Please, man, Guts. Dimitri kept killing, but no bloodshed could calm his mind. He reached peak war crimes, torturing an enemy commander in blind rage. But when his actions led to Rodrigue making the ultimate sacrifice, Dimitri 
was broken, terrified of yet another voice haunting him. Except this time, he had his professor to help him out. We really gotta pay teachers more, y'all. Dimitri still felt hatred for Edelgard, but looked past it to the friends and kingdom he neglected and made a choice. Instead of killing every last one of them, he would save every last one by retaking Fargus's capital. A task this wretch turned savior king had the strength to do. Dimitri has dodged meteors going Mach 60, decimated a squad of soldiers with one spear through, and defeated a wizard from the magic Illuminati. This is Talus, whose power shook a futuristic underground city. And Dimitri just walked through his magic like it was nothing. Dimitri's also more than a match for Edelgard, who, in her route, bested the Archbishop of the Church of Seros, Rhea. This is important, because after dragging it up, Rhea survived two exploding javelins of light, aka magic nukes! Jeez, and Dimitri can fight on her level? Indeed, but in the end, despite half a decade of slaughter, what? What? Dimitri was hesitant to kill Edelgard, in part from learning she wasn't responsible for the tragedy. Still, both monarchs had ideas for Fodlin that were simply incompatible. And then Edelgard pulled a fast one with that old dagger present. Dimitri definitely felt that irony. The war was over, and with his allies at his side, Dimitri claimed his place as a just king. Unless you know, you picked a different house. His story doesn't end very happy in those. But though the voices of the dead will haunt Dimitri until his final breath, so long as he has his friends, conviction, and compassion for the living, he will find peace. This episode of Death Battles. Oh, if he found peace. It's like, it's like fairy tale. Friendship. That's the reason he kept winning. The power of friendship. It's time for a death battle! Ah, <sighs> 100 men strong. What drives your slaughter? To save the high and mighty crap till you're dead. I'm liking this animation. I'm liking this animation. From your shoulders, the dead must have their revenge. On guts, on guts. Go to hell. Come on, guts. Come on, guts. I'll kill them. All of them. Down to the last one. I knew he wouldn't be able to win. Damn. What? Damn, he hit him with the Randy Marsh. Hey, I didn't hear no bell. Come on. Come on. Uh. 
still standing? So we're both shackled to the dead. You foul beasts will not have his soul! <laughs> Oh, he's still lost. Fuck! I don't know what's scarier, Dimitri. The well, that's the end of this video. Hope you like us, guys. Later. Bye.